Hei Tarja, how are you doing? Heippa, hei Kristiina. Hyvää iltaa. Good evening. Buonasera. I'm doing fine and thanks for inviting me. Thank you for being here and uh, yeah, it's it's fun because uh, we ca- could speak three different languages and understand each other's because the fun things is that you are a you are a Finn that live in Italy and I'm I'm an Italian that live in Finland. So it's yes. It's crazy. We have changed we have changed the countries. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more about how you end up in Italy. Well, it's a long, 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 long story. Many, uh, very traditional one. You know, I came here, I discovered Italy uh, with my holidays when I was uh, very, very young, very young, some months ago. And uh, then uh, it was 81 when I came uh, uh, the first time in Italy. And then, uh, I mean, you know, uh, whether... Uh, young people go and have yeah, fun. Party and, place. And blah, blah, blah. Yes. And then in uh, 85, I said that, okay, maybe Italy has something, other things to offer. Okay. So uh, that year, um, um, travel agents in Finland uh, had got uh, Sanremo to the program. And I knew Sanremo for Sanremo Festival. Yeah. So I said, hey, that's cool. So I came here in '85, and, and I fell in love with the city because it's my kind of city. It's not too big, not too small, and there is everything you want. And uh, you know, there is a sea, there is mount, there are mountains, uh, Alps, I, I should say. And so I came here since '85 each and every summer for my holidays, and '90. For one, I tried to live here, you know, uh, a couple of months, and uh, I worked, uh, worked, and and uh, and uh, studied, of course, Italian, and uh, then I came back home, and uh, then it's a long story. This traditional one, I met uh, the father of my my daughter Chiara um, in two, no, one, 1999, something like that. In Milano for a, for a business trip, and uh, then we fell in love. I left my home country, Helsinki hometown, home country, and I came here. And since two thousand, I live here. Yeah, so it's been yeah. a, a journey. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But I wouldn't go back. I'm sorry to say, but uh, I, you know, I always think that where your heart and soul feels. Good. That's your home. I am agree. Because and I also, guess the same. Yeah, same, I will uh, not get to back you. to Italy because I feel here in <clears throat> Finland at home. So it's something. It's something more than <clears throat> than saying that I like that place. There is something you feel. <clears throat> you feel something that it, not everybody can understand it. Yes, yes, and they don't need to understand. Yeah, you know uh, the reasons are yours. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Because I had heard more than a thousand times my friends here, but why in the world you left the most perfect country in the world, Finland? I said, well, (laughs) you know. Also, I think that there is not a perfect country because every country has its strength and weakness. And then yes. there is a, a personal preferences also, because if we talk yeah. about the weather, I love winter. Yeah. So, of course, being in Italy with a terrible warm summer for me is like like the worst thing yeah. ever. Yes. And yeah. uh, winter with <laughs> snow and uh, low temperatures is like the, the best thing ever. So it's... Uh, it's understandable. Yeah, that, yes, I, I, I really do understand you because the idea could be, uh, you know, here in, in, in San Remo, the winter is very mild, very good, very, you know, in these 23 uh, three, uh, years, I've seen only twice uh, snow that melted away in two hours. Yeah. Okay. 
But of course, we have the mountains, uh, Alps, uh, that if, if I want to see some snow in, in 30 minutes, try, I'm there. Uh, so it would be ideal to live here uh, the winters and in Finland the summers. Summer. Because here I admit that uh, uh, still two weeks ago we had 40 degrees. 40 I know, degrees. I know, terrible. <laughs> but now, now uh, uh, autumn is knocking on the door, door and uh, we have now something like 25 degrees. So that's, that's ideal. Yeah. But uh, let's talk more about uh, <coughs> you in the metal world. Uh, you are the mastermind of uh, Metal Shock Finland. So tell yeah, you us could say it. Yeah, tell us more <laughs> about it, how, how it started uh, and everything you want to tell about it. Okay, I try to make it short. Um, you know, I'm sure that you remember uh, the legendary uh, Metal Shock printed Italian mag. Um, uh, the founder, Aldo Mancusi, contacted me in uh, 2010 or something, maybe a bit earlier. And uh, he said that, uh, would you like to launch Metal Shock Finland? I simply couldn't say no. So that was the, you know, in, in, in the two words, uh, how I started. Uh, before, of course, I had been a, a journalist, a freelancer also when I lived in Finland, you know, normal, normal news and so. But uh, as my love is for music, uh, so I said that I would love to write about music. So, uh, so then uh, this Metal of Finland was a perfect uh, door to this world. Yeah. And... Uh... So you have been a journalist for a long time, but journalist uh, freelancer. Yes, yeah. yes. Already in '85, I remember uh, a group of Italian uh, singers that had won uh, Sanremo Festival that year. Maybe it was '85 or something. I, I don't recall. Uh, came to Helsinki uh, for the press conference, and there were there were Fior Daliso, Sandro Ciacoppe, uh, Riccardo Fogli, Umberto Tozzi. Uh, I, recall, uh, I, I, I remember that uh, Eros Ramazzotti uh, was going to be there because he had won, I think, that year, Festival in San Remo. So, uh, but he was ill uh, with fever, hey. so uh, he wasn't there. But uh, during that time, I remember that I, I already was involved uh, writing articles and, and doing interviews. And, and so on. Yeah, so the music was always your your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Now I'm doing a maybe stupid and too hard question. <clears throat> Do you have any idea how many artists you interview? Ooh. <laughs> uh. Now, lately, I, I don't do them anymore because I have no time. I have only 24 hours a day, and I have family. I have uh, many other things, and then maybe later on we are talking about the split screen management. Uh, but it must be more than 200 artists, uh, bands, uh, in these years. But honestly, because before Metal Finland, I did interviews also to TrueMetal.it. Okay. Uh, so uh, I I don't I I can't say I I I have no idea actually. Yeah. Because then uh, I I have uh, uh, interviewed also uh, uh, face okay first face but uh, but uh, that has never been uh, uh, published. Okay. You know on on the Mac. So yeah. so I have no idea no idea at all. Good question. Yeah. Also, if someone asks me. I cannot reply because there are many, <laughs> there are many, 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 many. <laughs> you meet people and uh, yeah, mm. it's, it's a nice thing to do, <laughs> I must say. Uh, yeah. Do you have yes. uh, an interview, an artist in particular that you remember the interview for a certain reason, uh, that it's something that you will never forget? Okay, yes, yes, I do. Actually... I remember how I met actually Peter from Vader. 
yeah. Vader, and uh, it was a uh, uh, very nice uh, chat because Peter is very uh, intelligent, very deep person. Uh, that I remember. I have interviewed him for many, many times. Uh, I do remember my interview with you uh, and uh, Glenn Hughes. Uh, he came uh, for a show here in Italy, and uh, that was, I don't recall, many, 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 many years ago. Okay, uh, that I remember he was uh, very nice because at the end of uh, uh, the interview, he said to me, now I do uh, a question to you. I said, okay, uh, where could I buy new sneakers? Because his sneakers, shoes, uh, uh, were uh, a bit, I think, uh, damaged or whatever. And uh, he, he asked me, where can I go to buy them? And so I explained to him that, okay, go there and there and then you know, you, you find the nice shops and everything. But uh, the story didn't, uh, don't tell, doesn't tell that if he really found them. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if he will never watch this interview, he can... Uh... Let, uh, maybe he let, will maybe he will know. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, but there are you know there are many many interviews yeah. and the most beautiful thing is that with many of the artists and bands I became friends you know as Peter is now as I told you then of course Tony Dolan one and only Do Tony Dolan one of and, the sweetest uh, my... person in the world <laughs> yes yes indeed he is uh, so uh, there are many, you know, not with everybody, but you basically understood it right away at the beginning of the interview that with this person, I stay in contact because you found the feeling right away. Yeah, there so is that's a lot of that, that, that wall. <clears throat> Sometimes you go there and you see that they are just because they have to. They Maybe yeah. not everyone has this interest to do, but they kind of have to. and. Uh, yeah, you feel and yeah. you don't know. The, sometimes I have some friends, oh, how was that artist when you interviewed him? Uh, yeah, it was kind. <laughs> but I say yeah. kind because yeah. I I hadn't the time to get to know the person. To mm. It was just an interview and that's it. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Yeah, and then uh, when you interview uh, uh, the artist bands uh, with the majors, they give you 20 minutes, you know, and uh, and that's much too short time to ask. Of course, uh, then you, you are talking about the album, a uh, new album and, and something like that. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, there are very good. Uh, Yossi Sassi from Open, Open, Open Atlant, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, he's a darling, absolutely. Yeah. He's a darling. Have you ever met uh, an artist that was... Uh, rude to you mm -hmm. yes i have a couple of uh let's say you, not rude, you don't you don't need to tell who they are but yeah no 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 uh let's say not rude uh, i remember one interview <clears throat> with a, a very um uh, with a uh, swedish uh, black metal band and everybody told me that please don't ask him this question and I said, but I wanted to ask because it was a very delicate question. Uh, so I thought that, okay, I will do all the other questions first. And the last one, I will do that question that everybody told me not to do it. And I thought that, okay, maybe he will, uh, let's say, insult me or whatever. But he was very kind. He was Absolutely. I mean, I can I could say that that interview uh, makes part uh, the best possible interview I uh, I've ever made because that was the moment that he, this very um, uh, considered very um, difficult person to interview uh, he melted just like that. He was the and he was uh, when he explained that uh, replied me to that uh, question. He asked sorry for many times because he was using rude words because uh, it was talking about a very bad moment in his life. So uh, he was saying sorry I, if I use these words and I go ahead. That's that's fine. So uh, that was very special moment. I can I can say. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's yeah. always so, when, when someone uh, opens up to you and yeah, is, yes. hope, is ready to tell a story that, yeah, that may very, be re very really true, hard true. for that person. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. that was, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm sure that I am going to remember that inter interview for the rest of my life too. Yeah, for sure. And did you ever get any gift from someone from the band so that you interviewed? Uh, when we met in a concert, yes, uh, t-shirts. Uh, yeah, I, I, have, um, I have, I remember one uh, because I love, love red wine. Uh, red wine, uh, a special bottle. Um, um, with, can I say the name? Steve DiGiorgio of Testament. And uh, then, of course, uh, some uh, um, not pasta, uh, not pesto, but some sort of sauce and uh, um, a cheese. Yes, that kind of thing. Of course, T-shirts, uh, albums, CDs. Um, you know the patches. Uh, that that kind of things. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got uh, last month. Uh, during the interview, I was in, interviewing a Saku Solin from Turmion Catilot, and mm -hmm. uh, I was asking about uh, the product that the band is selling with their brand, all the merchandising, <coughs> because every band now sell different things. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> and, uh, yes, yes. I was asking about uh, the beard oil, and okay. then uh, it. He say, I have this uh, ju just uh, fresh from the packaging. Uh, it was an open, and uh, then I was, oh, is it good? Here you are. You give to your boyfriend, <laughs> and then you let me know. <laughs> so okay, I got the beard oil. I don't have beard yeah. yet, but maybe in the future. <laughs> no, but my boyfriend <laughs> told that it, it was good. So it was a. Uh, Something that I was not expecting to receive. It was a. Uh, it was really nice, uh, and it's always, it's always nice to, to have this those moments also. Yeah, att attention, because uh, not everybody understands that uh, when you interview a band, you must uh, study. You must uh, make the band study. Even if you know the band, you know what they are playing, but uh, you must study and listen to their music, uh, the latest album, uh, and try not to ask the very same questions that tons of other journalists do. And so, it's difficult. Um, yes, that's true. Uh, that's, that's true. In particular, when a band uh, just releases <clears throat> an album, and uh, maybe it's the first album, or the second album, and you don't have that that much where to. Um, if on the internet you cannot find the information, it's really, re really difficult to come up with questions that are not the basic ones. Yeah, yeah. Some curiosity, some something behind the scenes or whatever. But yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, but uh, but uh, that's that's the beautiful part of it because uh, journalists must be curious, must be uh, you know know more than uh, than uh, it's been written or something. So so I like it. I like yeah. it. Do you like more to go with a written interview? So you have the qu the questions, uh, or do you like more to go with? Uh, uh, what it comes improvisation uh, of course i uh, what i do is uh, to create uh, let's say 10 questions uh, ready but then of course depending what the artist or band says then comes in mind another question mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's something like uh, i i prepare the basic i mean the the structure uh, where i want to arrive and then, uh, of course, it will uh, grow the interview uh, step by step. Yeah. Do you also do re review? You know, I don't like review I because uh, 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 review albums because I want to feel the album. I don't want to split it. 
I want to listen to the album several times and uh, see what it, what emotions it brings to me. And uh, there, and, and I don't feel to write them down because they wouldn't be technical reviews. Uh, so uh, they are, you know, they are coming from my heart. Many times I say directly to the artist what uh, the song or uh, album has uh, has um, bring to me, has brought to me. So, uh, so therefore, uh, I prefer not to write reviews. I maybe have done a couple of couple uh, sepultura uh, and maybe uh, two other albums. Uh, um, uh, what what I, I reviewed, but uh, as I as I told you, I don't like to review because uh, yeah, of course I know that review is always a personal opinion, but uh, I prefer then to tell my ideas and my emotions directly to to the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's talk about split screen management. What can you tell? What, what's okay. your figure there? What are you doing? Uh, and uh, what what can you tell about the split screen management? Okay, yeah, basically, um, uh, I'm running it uh, with. Okay, we have a team, international team, but I'm running it with Kimo Kuzmiri. I don't know if you know him, but he's considered as <clears throat> godfather of Finnish heavy metal. And uh, he has been in the business over for 40 years. So he has seen a lot of stuff. How the, the metal world was when old school, how it has changed, has changed in these years. And uh, I got to know him uh, when he was still uh, making a comeback of uh, Sarcophagus. Uh, and uh, he had many, uh, already back then, many other projects. And of course, we heard uh, about them uh, to my metal of Finland. Uh, and then, but and then we uh, time to time we heard uh, with each other. Um, he's now living in, in the UK with with, her, with his family. And um, uh, then, for some reason, we started to talk uh, basically a bit, yeah, a bit before and during when COVID hit. The world and lockdown, and we. Um, I had to, back then. Um, I was uh, working for another eight, um, management, but it didn't work as uh, you know. You have your principles, okay, and uh, it it didn't work how I would have liked to uh, to, to to make it work. So uh, I started to talk with him about this. Uh, this thing, and also he t told me uh, if he would launch um, management, how it should be. And then at the certain point, well, why don't we do it? So, uh, so he has this split screen productions. Uh, he's a filmmaker now, and uh, so we um, uh, created this uh, split screen management under this uh, split screen production. And uh, we have very um, capable team members. I feel um, uh, novice. How you say that? Just at the at the beginning of uh, ABC, because the other persons in our team they are, you know, they are working for Andrea Pocelli. They are working for you know for the lights and everything, light shows and everything. Then uh, uh, Kimo. Uh, has uh, toured with uh, Corpi Kelani. He's doing these uh, multi-camera uh, films, and he has working for many, 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 uh, many great uh, bands and everything. So I felt that you know that I'm in a good company here because uh, I, I feel that every day you have something new to learn. And my role, okay, I do uh, press releases, uh, promotion. Uh, then, of course, AR, so artist uh, di um, director, uh, and uh, and uh, then booking uh, for festivals. Okay, we are doing it all together, but uh, then somebody has to do it, uh, you know, write the thing, write a letter, 
etc. So, so, so uh, uh, we are doing a bit everything, you know, because we are like a family, and uh, we are helping, we are consulting with each other very often daily. Let's say, let's say, and uh, we are talking um, a lot to find out new ways, new ways for the bands to earn money. Because the problem is <clears throat> when uh, COVID and lockdown hit, hit in, all the festivals, all the tours, all the shows, they were cancelled, even two, three times. So now uh, the bands, okay, now it, it has started, but slowly, before we are in the normal situation, if ever, it takes time. Yeah. So um, uh, the problem is for many festivals is that uh, uh, festivals who had or who had to cancel, they have lock uh, backlog. So that means that uh, uh, the bands who should have played three years ago, it was automatically uh, um, uh, how you say was postponed uh, for the next one. Okay, that was cancelled too. So that takes that now after three years, nearly, uh, we are starting to come back to normal. But still, this locked, uh, backlog, backlog is there that, uh, um, uh, that uh, yeah, that uh, uh, gives some, some uh, uh, not difficulties because we are working anyhow. Uh, but uh, it's tough because there are now so many hungry bands that wants to play and wants to tour and wants wants to go on stage and that's very understandable absolutely yeah true uh, do you have band f i sorry i'm concerning what i was <laughs> asking i'm reformulate the question with uh, uh, do you work with uh, mm. Italian band artist finnish band artist or uh, from all over the world all over the world. Uh, basically, at the now, uh, now we have uh, one band from Italy, one uh, band from Finland, one band from Greece, um, one band from Germany, Ireland, and Japan. Uh, then, of course, uh, we have been dealing with American bands, and uh, yeah, uh, basically, uh, and, and Swedish bands, Norwegian bands. Uh, so uh, basically, whole Europe mainly, but of course uh, not excluding Japan or Asia or, or, or the United States. Yes. Now I see some. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, let's start talking. How did you get into metal music? How I did. Okay, how I came in. Okay, when I <clears throat> when I was uh, when I lived already uh, still in Finland, I uh, sang in a in a in a band, uh, underground band, uh, covers. But we had great time, absolutely. And uh, um, um, that was okay before before I I already played the guitar because my cousins. Uh, they are very involved uh, with music, and uh, so um, our family is a bit uh, the, key, the, the family. I have a big family, family or uh, parenti. Yeah, family, relatives. Uh, yeah. Relatives. So many of them, they are they are very good singers, opera singers, um, all the chambers. So uh, I started to play guitar already when I was very young. Uh, uh, 10, 11 years maybe, and uh, you know this classic guitar. I always when we because my mother's relatives they are they are, they are coming from Karelia. So when they do a party, birth party, whatever party, all 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 uh, all uh, reasons are good reasons, or excuses are good reasons. So everybody, you know, I took my guitar. My, my, my brother took the guitar, we sang together, we, we had very, very nice parties, I remember. Uh, very, and, and who, my mother uh, is um, uh, a recitare poesie, 
it's uh, uh, um she uh, uh, inter 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 poet, poet, uh, poem. 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 Yeah. yes poems so uh each of us had something to bring to the party and that was very nice done yeah very. so a, fa a family of artists <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, my mother also did uh, uh, did uh, theater. Uh, uh, so uh, yes, yes, we can. I could, I could say that uh, our uh, relatives we are quite, uh, in many ways, quite artist, artist, yeah. artistic. Yeah. Yeah, and you heard for the first time metal music when. Well, okay, uh, more or less. In, in our past, okay, rock and roll. Uh, let's say uh, heavy rock. Uh, uh, of course, I, I listened uh, since my, my childhood. Uh, let's say Berlin, uh, Pink Floyd, um, uh, Deep Purple, and and so on. That that was you know the first time when I heard something else that uh, Finnish uh, Finnish tango or whatever. Um, uh, but then um, actually, when I came here to Italy. Yeah, I I got to know uh, some bands. Uh, one local band, Data Kill. Uh, they are, you know, a hard, uh, you know, uh, uh, core band. Uh, let's say, how you call it? Uh, metal core, metal core, and, and so on. So I kind of entered to this metal world from metal core. Okay. Okay. So not I not not to the to... more soft. <laughs> yes. 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 From, uh, with melodies and everything, you know, you know. And I loved Mad Balls. Oh my God, I still love them, their music. But then uh, slowly, and also because of uh, writing the articles, I had to listen to many kinds of uh, metal. Some of them, I I feel that it's not my my cup of coffee. And uh, but death metal, absolutely not all death metal, death metal, black metal, death metal, but uh, uh, some of them, you know, there are death metal bands, very good ones that I yeah, I listen, but I can't say that I like because I like death metal. That's not, uh, let's say, that I, I think that uh, uh, the genres you shouldn't. In, um, put you in into one genre, but you should listen to everything okay. because you may find very nice things. Yeah. Because I know that somebody, oh, no, 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 I listen only that and that and that. Okay, that's okay. If that's your choice. But uh, the reach of this uh, world, meta world, is that uh, uh, these sub, sub genres that are, you know, there are many bands that they are inventing them that you can't even categorize them. You can't say, what you what do you exactly play? But I like it. Whatever you play, I like it. So so I, I have many bands, uh, many genres that I like. But of course, my first love, first love, okay, besides uh, metalcore, but, um, but uh, death metal, but uh, selectively, how could I say? Yeah. 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 But uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I I wouldn't say uh, that uh, I wouldn't put the boundaries. Okay, I, I wouldn't put the boundaries frontiers between the different genders because yeah. you could miss something. You know, create experiences and emotions while listening to other. I agree because yeah. there are a lot of things that you can get inspiration as a musician. And then when you, yeah. as a listener also, uh, so yes. it's important to be open-minded. Absolutely, absolutely. So, do you have a favorite band? Favorite, yes, yes, yes. I have many, but I wouldn't um, because if I start to list them all, uh, I'm sure that I would uh, forget many. Someone. So I let's let's say only one name. Vader. Vader, yeah. Vader, yes. Uh, but there are many, absolutely. I because uh, I would feel bad to start to say that I love love those, this, this, this. 
Then afterwards, I said, oh gosh, I, I have forgotten uh, so many great names because you know I have I have my age and I start to forget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not easy yes. to remember everything. <laughs> no, no, oh, yeah. no, no, actually. And uh, which one uh, <laughs> is the 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 album that is more close to your your heart and and why? Uh, you mean Vader or uh, in, in general, general? In general, the the the, <sighs> the album that is in the number one of your life, even if it's not metal. Um, what could I say? Because uh, I I'm listening so much that I I really can't say. You know, it's impossible to say because. Uh, there again, if I start to say that favorite, I, I can't say that I have only one favorite album, but I have many that I go back uh, very uh, willingly and very with pleasure and so on. So therefore, uh, I prefer not to reply yeah. because then I'm sure the, uh, again to to forget uh, something. But as I said, that uh, okay, all the music of Vader but in different ways. Uh, then Mad War remains uh, always, you know, uh, uh, because they really um, caught, opened my, my mind. Yeah. So, uh, so, but there are so many, I mean, uh, the world is full of great, great, great bands. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so, there uh, are so, so many. You, you can, uh, you can uh, never listen to everything that is in the world because there are so many, and every, you know, the cool things is that every day you can find a new one and fell in love with a song in particular. And yes, yes, it's, and maybe that's amazing. Song, and maybe that song means the a world to you for a certain moments. You know, yeah. in your life. So, so therefore, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't reply to this yeah, one. Yeah. So. Uh, do you like to go to see live uh, performance? I love to go to see live performance, but now, you know, when uh, lockdown hit, uh, everything changed. Um, then of course your life changes, your possibilities changes, because here is Sanremo, if we count out uh, Festival de Sanremo. <laughs> so uh, the nearest places to really see good shows is for Milan, Torino, Bologna, uh, okay, Rome also, but let's say uh, this. And uh, because uh, before, many years ago, I went uh, quite often also to uh, Genova, but um, lately there are um, uh, good shows, but you have to arrive there. And you know, I have a Fiat Panda who is not uh, very liable, so I wouldn't even try to, to yeah. <laughs> go for a long way. I, I go around here in town, of course, but uh, uh, but uh, longer travel to are not. No, you cannot no. be sure that the the, the car is. Uh, is at your side with me <laughs> with way. me all, all the all the way yeah yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. you are right yeah. so therefore i i have uh, some very very dear friends um for example my tattoo artist who has become my uh, fratellino my little brother uh he is always ready to go to the shows but uh his work is, you know, it's not possible uh, all the time. Mm. It has happened many times that he's, he sends me, what about, let's go there and there. So I would love to, but that, that weekend I can't. During the week I can't because uh, uh, Chiara goes to school or now she uh, uh, stopped uh, the, the, um, the high school and now she's studying academy, academy. Uh, this this year, so uh, so he's he, she's already eighteen years old. So uh, so she's a big girl. But uh, then we have a dog, very very shy dog that I can't uh, take her 
uh, with us uh, when we go. So then we have to see who comes to comes to take care of her, and and so that's not so it's not easy. simple anymore. Yeah, not easy. Not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I also, you know, uh, I come from Trieste, and Trieste, no, in the last, let's see, when I left, then some event started happening. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why I left and something happened. Uh, yeah. But normally I was always going to Milan or other places yeah. to, or to Slovenia to see concerts. Uh, yeah, yeah. And now I live uh, close to Pori, and when I moved, there were places that offer pretty much every weekend a gig. And uh, I think that 2018 was the one that the place, most of them, got closed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sad sure. because there is not there is something now happening there are people that are trying to to make uh, live music metal music live in in this city but uh, if you want to see some some bigger band then you have to go yeah. to yeah. Tampere, yeah. Turku or Helsinki and okay. yeah as as you say there there are other things i'm working so during the week it's not possible the weekend yeah, yeah. i have m maybe something else that i have to do and yeah it's it's not easy but we do what what, what we can what you can yeah. yes yeah. that's true absolutely yeah yes and always always we must remember to support local bands true absolutely local local because we must also also think that metallica or whatever they, they start from nothing. A local yes yes so, uh, so therefore, uh, uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, we we don't we uh, da, uh, we don't uh, uh, must uh, forget it. Yeah. What's the coolest gig that you ever seen? <laughs> coolest gig. Okay. Uh, many, many, many. Uh, when uh, Vader, when <laughs> when uh, Venomink play, um, they are always. Uh, very intensive and very fun. Uh, testament. Um, uh, too many. Of course, of course, Mad Paul. Uh, I remember uh, when I was the first ever time in their, you know, uh, gig, it was, you know, without this transen, how you call that, uh, these uh, uh, the, gates yeah. in the, the front of the... the you just could go and touch the, the you know, the, the stage. And uh, that was something that I felt this concert. But maybe I could say that uh, because it was my very first Cards of Metal in Italy uh, festival. I remember that, uh, you know, I had no idea what to, to wait. I went there with Data Kill guys, uh, that uh, metal core uh, band, uh, local and uh, co local uh, band. I went uh, with, the, with them. And when we arrived uh, to Metacourt, Metacourt, uh, yeah, Metal, and nearly, you know, for many kilometers before, I start to feel, <laughs> and I think, uh, who was playing? I, I don't recall. But anyhow, that was something I said, wow. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so maybe that was because it was the first time yeah. uh, I, I experienced something like that. And uh, yeah, I could say that one because, yeah. Uh, yeah. Great memory from that. that Great memory. memory. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as you are a Finnish person that lives in Italy, how do you see the differences in the metal community in Italy compared to Finland? Mm. Well, every, everybody says and knows that in Finland is uh, the most, I mean, there are the most, you know, we have uh, only six million people there, more or less. Yeah. And uh, uh, there are so many metal, metal bands uh, there in, you know, per, 
citizen, you know, per person. So uh, everybody knows that's the fact number one. But how it uh, differ, differs, uh, it's, you know, I a bit lost uh, the Finnish metal community because I, 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 I live here for 23 years. And uh, last time, I was last summer to see my mom and brother with Kiara. Uh, after five years, because there was lockdown, there was COVID, and you couldn't uh, do it. Uh, and last time, uh, I really experienced a festival. What was the festival name? In Finland, is it was at least 10 years ago. So uh, I a bit lost the you know, the, the touch of uh, how it works in Finland, but I know how it works here. Um, there are, as, as I told you, that uh, especially uh, during summer times, many, many bars and, and uh, they have, and thanks to them, uh, they invite these local bands to play. Uh, but uh, that's a very tricky question as well, because uh, uh, I think every everything changed after COVID. With time, yeah. So, uh, so before uh, you decided to go there because that and that band was was playing, but now you have to, if if you don't live in Mil Milan, for example, uh, you have to organize everything and you have to think a thousand things. On stage, I'm sure because now all the bands they are hungry, they they are hungry to play. They go there with new strength, and new, uh, and most of the bands they have, uh, um, they use the time, a lockdown, lockdown time, uh, creating new music, new albums. So they are full of passion. Maybe that kind of uh, enthusiasm uh, came back during the frustration of lockdown. Because yeah. they are really, I mean, I, I, I talked very, with very many um, musicians who were really um, depressed. And they said that they won their depression uh, by starting to create new music. So, uh, so I'm sure that uh, even if these three years were very difficult, because you just stayed at home and, and uh, didn't know what to do. And maybe you played home and disturbing your neighbors or whatever, I don't know. But uh, now they somehow they charge, recharge, see, recharge. My English is bad today, sorry. Uh, maybe we should it's, turn it's, to it's not, it's not. My English is always bad, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, so they, they recharge it, charges the batteries. And uh, now they, when they go to the tours, they have something, uh, new passion. Because I know that playing in the band, it's not easy to keep up the passion. Yeah, true. Uh, so maybe this, somehow it was bad, but okay, it happened, lockdown, COVID, but it brought something new, new strength to the band. So, uh, so yeah, I... Uh, uh, Comparing the situation between, because I know that, okay, also in Finland was locked down, also in Finland was all closed, and I'm sure that also uh, Finnish fans, they are full of energy now, because uh, uh, the things that uh, have started to happen again. So that's a good thing, but uh, before this backlog is sorted, I mean melted, uh, so we can really start more or less from the empty empty table. I mean that there are more possibilities. We have we have uh, we have started to have these uh, tours with big bands that we are uh, proposing to our roster bands and roster artists. We have also roster artists as, as well. Uh, so um, uh, different situation. They they are coming in uh, if not daily but uh, uh, weekly. Let's say. So, uh, so that's a very good thing, because uh, we can say that, hey, finally, finally, uh, you have the possibility to tour. But then, of course, we are talking about this new uh, 
I don't, I, I don't know if you wanted to ask me, but uh, touring with big bands, um, those support bands, uh, they buy for the slot. Yeah, I know. I know that they have. And that band unfortunately, band. I know that um, absolutely all old schoolers uh, they don't uh, accept this fact. But unfortunately, touring uh, has become so expensive for the logi logistical things. Uh, everything that you know you have to and you have crew let's say, talk about uh, big bands of course uh, it depends uh, if, if uh, the band uh, um, sets uh, all by themselves and, and so on but but it has become very uh, expensive and therefore to be able to tour and give a chance to the bands to play with the great audience you know not uh, 20 persons but 200 uh, 2000 persons and even more so uh, so that of course it's a bit um, uh, two coin question because uh, uh, there are many bands that want to buy for uh, slots and that's very understandable they have budget and then there are bands that don't want to do it and that's also very understandable but then it changes and gives a bit less possibilities. But it's not impossible, absolutely. But now let's go to my jar of random topics. That's how okay. I and let's see I'm curious. what we get today to, play, to, to talk about. Let's see. The first one we are going to get to, but the first one is uh, fears. Uh, so yes. okay. yeah what what is your biggest fear if i can ask yes yes you can ask uh as a mom my biggest fear is that i won't be here as as long as my daughter needs me yeah maybe that's the biggest fear because i know that uh uh, you can fear uh, snakes, you can fear um, nightmares, you can fear, uh, yeah, and of course, uh, fear not to be healthy. Because I have had my, uh, my in my uh, uh, past, uh, some illnesses that could brought me uh, to a wheelchair. So, uh, so yeah, and to be here long enough and healthy. Yeah, yeah. So that's my hope. So fear is if I won't side, be yeah. here long, long enough and if I won't be healthy. Yeah, I also have a, pretty much the same, you know, that uh, the health is something that we should always be grateful because yes. it's not always certain that you are going to be healthy. You never know what's going to happen and... There are yeah. so 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 many things, uh, and also uh, when uh, you leave this world, and it's more about uh, when I leave. I want to be that hold that uh, I am yeah. not uh, leaving too yeah. much uh, pain to the people. Yeah, it's yeah, like they, they, that they were they could accept. Yeah, she had her life and. Yeah. So I understand uh, your point of your point of view on the fear. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's take another topic. Let's see if what what we have. This. this is fun. This is yeah. fun. You know, this is a new aspect aspect of of an interview. Yeah. Well done. So cartoons. Do you like cartoons? cartoons. Of course, when when uh, Chiara was uh, small, uh, younger, you know, we I knew I knew everything about, let's say, Barbies and whatever. But cartoons, really cartoons. Um, um, when I was young, or still now, uh, I, do you mean that when I was young, what cartoons I I yeah in in in, ge in general uh, what when, uh, when you were young 
Yeah. What, 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 what cartoons uh, were? Aqua, Cadona, Duck, absolutely, absolutely, Donald Duck, absolutely, absolutely. Donald Duck. Mickey Mouse, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, in those years, you, you, you couldn't see, I mean, when I was a uh, uh, couple of years, I remember that my parents bought the, the, the first ever TV, and uh, it, it was black and white, of course, and it wasn't uh, um, that every, every family had an old, uh, old TV or whatever. And let's talk, to talk about uh, the, 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 the videos or whatever, uh, video cassettes. So, so what we see, whatever we could see, uh, was on the TV um, in Finland. And, uh, and, and then, of course, uh, these uh, little magazines. Uh, I, I think I, uh, my mommy ordered me uh, this, uh, uh, I would say, it, uh, that came each week. Uh, Aquanka, Aquanka, Donald Duck, and yeah. uh, Mickey Mouse. So I think those two uh, were the were the, the cartoons that I, I yeah. yes, yes. And uh, when your uh, daughter was a kid, uh, what what you were watching with her on the on the TV, or did you did you buy some DVDs or? Uh... Yes. We actually, we uh, just a couple of months ago, we made an in the, in the inventory. Uh, we said that okay, you you have all your old DVDs, and uh, then we you know we we just look at look. Do you remember how many times we looked at it? This and you know every Barbie, this Barbie Barbie girl, these uh, uh, DVDs of Barbies. Uh, then of course. Um, those traditional ones, um, Capuchetto Rosso, uh, I don't know how you call it in English. And, I, I don't um, know, I would say Red Hood, but maybe it's not her name. Red Hood, yes, okay. <laughs> I don't know, I'm and, just throwing a name. <laughs> and uh, what else? Che altro abbiamo guardato quando eri piccola? Tutti i parti, Biancaneve, okay. Uh, red, no, Biancaneve, Snow White. No white. <clears throat> well, anyhow, we, we did this in, inventario, a couple, and the, okay, also Mickey Mouse, but we made this inventario and we had so much fun when we remembered uh, all this. This was a must, a scoopy doo, yes, yeah, scoopy doo. This was a must every day, many times a day. And I said, well, could we change for a while? <laughs> because she, she had, the, you know, uh, you know, uh, but that was very fun time because, uh, because uh, you know, uh, uh, because I normally, I, I don't go often just to the cinema. Okay. Uh, okay. With, he, with her, uh, we went to see all these new films that came out and uh, yeah and uh, Violetta you remember Violetta because she's uh, sitting on the couch uh, Violetta this um, uh, South American girl who is singing and something like that you know I don't know yeah, if yeah uh, I, I remember I was still in in, a, in Italy back then and I think my sister was watching Violetta if I remember well. Violetta so, okay I have I was that girl with the uh, eyeglasses, uh, or I I'm confused. Uh, I no, I, I can't remember. Okay, anyhow, oh, yeah, anyhow. Yeah. So so <laughs> then we made this inventario, and uh, we uh, we just kept this uh, you know very very uh, important uh, DVDs, and uh, we uh, uh, we gave us a gift. Uh, uh, these other DVDs to uh, for maybe to her own school and uh, some some kids around here. So uh, so because I don't want to throw uh, throw them, you know, yeah. because uh, they have still you know they they are working and so on. So so that was very nice one. Yeah, uh, but let's talk about uh, the most important thing about this interview. Pizza. Of course, pizza. 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 Pizza beat, pizza beat. So, so, do you like pizza? Of course, of course, I love pizza. I, I, 
I, of course, she do. Uh, she does. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but you know, when I when you mentioned me that, of course, we will talk about pizza. To me, came right away this uh, classical question: Does pineapple pineapple goes on pizza? No, <laughs> but I admit admit it when I when I lived in it uh, in Finland. Of course, I ate. Uh, kinku uh, ananas pizza, the ham and ananas uh, pineapple pizza, because it was normal. It was absolutely normal. But there was also, uh, I, I remember that also another weird combination that you there is a couldn't peach, uh, peach uh, with uh, missed meat. I think yes. there are people... Uh, and tuna. Ham and tuna. Tony kinku pizza. No way. You simply can't mix tuna and ham on the same pizza. So I, but that came to my mind. So yeah, in it, but I, I edit, of course, when I was there. Yeah. But yes, I love pizza, absolutely. And uh, time to time I do it, you know, uh, also by myself. And uh, yeah, and that means that when uh, I do my pizza, not the but uh, this uh, al taglio, uh, al te, yeah. alla teglia, um, I open the fridge. I said, "Cuckoo, what's in there?" And then I make this combination with different, but of course, not mixing, not mixing meat and and fish or pineapple or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Also, I think that uh, in Finland people are learning how okay. to to eat and what to what combination are better because I see that people are more uh, interested to buy certain product. They, they they are more selective now. Not all, but okay. a lot of people are uh, so. <laughs> but still, the pineapple is something that. We still uh, live. But with I that. remember, I remember that it wasn't awful. I mean, I liked it even. But now, I, uh, as, as living here, I said, no, you can eat pineapple without pizza. So, so uh, uh, therefore, you know, it's, but I ate it many times yeah. years back. Absolutely. But why? Can I ask you a question? Yes, of for course. your podcast, for your podcast, why metal pizza? Well, um, we were, I think, last, maybe it was last November, and uh, I was going to, we, we were eating uh, in a pizzeria before going to a gig, and uh, okay. I had also to do an interview with a band, and uh, a friend of mine there told me, why we were eating pizza. Are you going to ask the band uh, what they think about uh, does pineapple belong on pizza or not? And uh, then I was, uh, no, I cannot ask this. It's not It's not something that I'm going to ask. Oh, but how could we be uh, something called uh, metal pizza? And then start to just run in my head all the time. Metal pizza, metal pizza. Then I start to write down what what i want this to be and uh, yeah and yeah and then i was let's let's try let's see how it goes so now it's still the beginning since uh, i start i think it was july uh, okay and uh, yeah let's see i like I, it i, I, I like I, it. I hope to get uh, as many guests as possible there are also other uh, other things coming my mind i'm thinking that from january i will start once and per month to have more guests at the same time with one topic okay. but i have to okay, list great. the topic and think about of the guest of course not everybody are going to say yes i'm going to be available that day and but taking in consideration different aspects of the metal world and yeah, it's Sort and of, see uh, what, uh, what what conversation uh, I can get out. Oh, that's that's very interesting and uh, great, great ideas. And that's also uh, true that when you do something, okay, you have to start 
or something, and then you, uh, while you strada facendo, uh, then you, uh, you know, certain situations and ideas, they just come. Yeah. You know, one, one morning you wake up and you have your morning coffee, and, uh, and by the way, do you do a Finnish uh, breakfast or Italian? Uh, neither one. <laughs> I, I mean, I learned to eat breakfast in Finland because in Italy I was just drinking water and then to work. Uh, yeah. Here I start to having tea because I don't like coffee. I, I okay. come from the one of the coffee city in Italy and I don't like coffee, but tea bread without nothing just br bread oh. and uh, yogurt that's it <laughs> that's good that's good and don't you worry if you don't like coffee because i hate nutella okay I hate, that's uh, that's my you know confession i confess that i hate nutella <laughs> So Kiara is very happy about it because she loves it. So <laughs> she can <laughs> eat every, everything. Yeah. I have a, yeah. another question about the pizza. What's your favorite okay. pizza? My favorite pizza is uh, that normally when we go out, I, I took it very simple. Not margherita, but uh, it could have carciofi e prosciutto. Okay. Carciofi e prosciutto. But when I do... Uh, uh, make it I well you should have been here when my mommy was here you know she's from Karelia and Karelians when we, they are talking about whatever eating uh, they are and, and my mother is artist uh, so <laughs> I remember she said okay let me make a pizza okay okay the kitchen is all yours and it had Tons of things on the pizza, everything, and it was good. It was a bit weird, but it was very heavy, very heavy pizza, heavy metal pizza, <laughs> and uh, but it was good. But uh, also, I have a bit this uh, kind of uh, uh, talent to create uh, because when I do uh, carbonara or pizza or whatever, uh, I don't like to look for uh, for the receipt yeah. uh, <laughs> she says I hope um, so uh, so uh, pizza for me is something that you create uh, you when I see different uh, uh, ingredients and I know where I want to arrive then I said okay that and that but okay I try to keep it simple not as my mommy because it was really heavy yeah. heavy pizza yeah, but okay. Uh, but if, if I go out, I prefer this uh, carciofi prosciutto. Yeah. So a mm. classic. Classic, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, nice. So we are at the end of this, in of this interview. It was really a pleasure to have you as guest and uh, you had a lot of interesting story and uh, I hope to have you again as guest uh, maybe in one of those <laughs> where there are more people, so more discussion. It will be interesting that's to it. hear different yeah, points of view. But I will, I will yeah. uh, contact you when, uh, when there is... And the in time. the meantime, we will, we will hear in, in uh, Facebook, absolutely. True. Yeah, now yeah. we are, we are yeah. friends, so this, this is the, the good thing about do, doing those interviews also to get yeah. to know people and the uh, social yeah. online that's that's true and i for my part i invite everybody who is uh, watching and listening uh, to keep a look to my metals of finland of course and uh, to the fans that who are looking for management uh, a real management that who really wants to work with with bands for their good uh, because uh, every band has uh, different uh, needs, different targets, and so uh, so we we don't have any default uh, concept. We take every band as a unique band and uh, talk with them uh, together and uh, do the planning together. So if out there there are other bands who are looking for a really, I mean, uh, simple but really a hard-working management, we are here, speed-free management. 
Sorry, I couldn't help it. This little yeah. publicity. Yeah. So you heard Czech Metal Shock Finland, and then if you are a band, you know, contact Aria. And uh, I, Aria. I, or you, you find us, find us of course on Facebook as Split Screen Management. So yeah. uh, there you see everything what we are doing. Yeah. Ok, e ti ringrazio, Cristina. Ti ringrazio, col, ti ringrazio con tutto il cuore che mi ha invitato, è stato il mio piacere, assolutamente. E quando... eh, è butta passa la sua, Max Gans. Tulla. Tulla. E lì che arriva Jacko Kaikille e ha una buona tulla. Cuccia, cuccia, resto del giorno e autunno and uh, enjoy the snow when it comes. I will, I will. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I'll uh, talk to you very soon and bye-bye yeah. and thank you once again. Thank you.